Greetings everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Tokyo Avengers Season 2. Uh, yeah, Tokyo Avengers Season 2, Episode 10. Welcome back to the Dojo. Ryu, he's age. Um, we're back for more Anime Night in the Dojo. Uh, if you hear a fan going on in my background, it's because it's fucking hot. <laughs> Uh, the heat has finally taken hold in Southern California. It only took till the middle of July, but you know, it, it could be worse. It could have started in April, like it has like the last decade. So yeah, it's going to take it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much you can actually hear it on my end, but I have a freaking AC thing. You can kind of hear it. It's not really that big of a deal. It's not chicken status, so we're probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, hey. Uh, we talked about this, um, I don't know if we talked about it on the video yes, last week, but uh, this still over here was something we noticed of um, uh, Kisaki and then the two uh, Black Dragon Lieutenant guys, Coco, and I forget the other guy's name. But uh, uh, that's like full Tomon garb they got going on there um, from, for the outro, so that's kind of interesting. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if that's like something that goes on in the future. Is that like something that's changed? Like... Next time Takamichi uh, takes his leap forward kind of deal. That's definitely what it looks like is that uh, in this new timeline they join Tomon and are a member in the future. Right. Is, uh, that's going to be the next thing is uh, what Kisaki's next move is. You know, um, we still, we I talked about uh, how we needed, needed his relative, but I'd like to see the full Taiju backstory. You know what I mean? Um, we talked about that last time, so hopefully that's coming. Little, I don't know if we're necessarily going to get it this season, but we'll definitely get more Taiju. Yeah. Um, I'd be shocked if we didn't. Yeah. So we got plenty of time for that. We got four episodes left total because this ep uh, this, this episode, the season goes to 13. Um, and due to random shenanigans, uh, we might be doing 12 and 13. It's like a combo thing, uh, depending on certain things for their schedule. But uh, that's not a this week thing, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, but we got left on the whole uh, Mikey and Draken taking Takamichi to Hina. So I uh, had a bunch of speculation on whether she had anything to do with, you know, you know, informing Mikey and Draken what was going on, that kind of thing. Um no. Mikey and Draken are taking Takamiji to Hina after uh, taking out the entirety of Black Dragon by themselves. Right. <laughs> 100 dudes, no problem. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> so, uh... Usually the content with Hina is pretty damn solid. So, uh, that's where we're starting. So, you bringing that up randomly reminds me, I, uh... Apparently, we're in the minority. At least uh, compared to the Japanese audience. Because apparently, uh, there was actually a popularity poll for characters uh, a little while back that like the author did. And there was something like 70,000 votes. Kina got 188. 188? Yeah, <laughs> out of like 70-some thousand votes. That's shocking, considering it's basically her and Draken carrying the damn show. <laughs> Kisaki only placed, like, 21st on the list with, like, a, a little over a thousand votes. I, I don't know. I mean, everybody can have their favorite characters and whatever, but uh, if we're, we're speaking, like, uh, objectively of characters who run the series and are, like, the driving force for, you know, the story... It's Hinata, Kisaki, and Draken. Mikey is on the next tier below, right there with Takamichi. And then you just go lower from there. You know what I mean? Um, if you're talking about personal favorites, that's completely different. You know what I mean? If that just turns into a popularity contest, you know, uh, well, you know, yeah, like that is, that is what it is. It's a popularity vote, but still. Right? Yeah. That that to me that's shocking. Uh. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we, we, we see a lot of votes and stuff like that that come in and, you know, it's a poll, you know, that could have been 70,000 people who are just super into whoever the hell won that. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Yeah, so the top five from lowest to highest were someone we haven't met yet. Fourth was Takamichi. Third was Baji. Second is Chifuyu, and number one, obviously, is Mikey. Fair enough. Uh, but if we're talking 70,000 votes and Hinata only getting 100, that is such a marginal fraction of a percentage that it's maddening to me. It's... <laughs> You know what I mean? It wasn't so. It wasn't seventy thousand. It was apparently fifty-four thousand votes. But yeah, still. You, you, that's still, <laughs> you know, one percent of that is is fifty. So she got what, like two percent of the vote? <laughs> yeah, Hinata is twenty-two at one hundred and eighty-seven, and Kisaki is twenty-one at three hundred and forty-six. Yeah. So uh, that's that, that's interesting. I mean, you can like whoever you want, but as far as I'm concerned for the story parts, yeah, just, but still, that, that, that number is very surprising to me, just, just in general. It's not like she's not part of the show, you know what I mean? <laughs> she's first, around. First drop him. He's ninth with, uh, 1980. Fair enough. The man with the two most legendary lines in the show so far, and <laughs> barely cracking the top ten. Yeah, he place is under Mitsuya, who we basically haven't even seen until now. Well, I mean, you know, if it's uh, people who read the manga, you know, different. Uh, so that's interesting. The Hina thing does, in fact, shocked Pikachu face me. But everybody's allowed to like whoever they want, so... <laughs> it still surprises me, though. Um, but th that was like a collection of first place votes, though, right? Like, who's your favorite character? So you have to pick one, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. It was that, that, that's not a, like, hey, rank these characters and place them from, like, 1 to 30 or something. Yeah, no, from what I know, it was just a popularity vote of just basically pick your favorite character. Fair enough. And it's whoever got the most votes. Right. So, uh, if you have to sit there and, like, you know, choose between a bunch of them, I guess it's different. But, uh, still, that's surprising to me. <laughs> so, uh, since we didn't have a huge amount to say going into this one, uh, yeah, that's, that's some random little bits of information there. So, uh. Why don't we push some buttons and see what happens this week, shall we? Here goes something. What did you bring me here for, Mikey? Uh, 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 oh, speaking of Emma. What do I yeah, see? Yeah, there she is. I, I, um, I, um, uh, You're 25. Impossible. Get it and out. I did. <laughs> that split up. Nina. I dumped her without even giving her a good reason. Yesterday, literally yesterday in canonic timeline, literally 24 hours, less than 24 hours ago, little over 24 hours ago, actually. Another fight, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, another weirdo. Why is it that every time we talk about a character that hasn't been around in a while, they just show up? Why? Why does this happen every time? This is some shit. Yeah. So what were you praying for? If I saw him right now, I don't know what I'd even say to him. Things are so weird. Nina! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> He's right. Everything your father said. I'm nothing but a piece of shit to Lakeland. And all I've done is get you into terrible danger. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you, Hina! <laughs> and why are you crying about it, Emma? Hmm. He's a wimp when it comes to women, and he's a lame fighter, too. But he always comes through when the chips are down. It's strange. He really is a lot like him, huh? In a lot of ways. Yeah. Whenever it seems I've lost my way, I want you to straighten me out, Takemichi. Like Shinichiro. Uh... I think you're asking way too much of his autopilot right now. You can count 
down on it. Full house. Huh? You're a good player, kid. Good thing this isn't strip poker, or I'd already be naked. How do you keep drawing all those jokers? <laughs> yeah, because you're so far from that right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's showing them. You're a quick learner, kid. Oh! Oh, well, why'd you get that dragon tattoo? You, you traded him for it. <laughs> I paid you off with my barbecue. That dragon tattoo design is mine. To us like little kids, York face. York face. <laughs> Hi, pretty lady. Pretty, pretty lady. Are you raising girls or little monsters? I don't take it personally. How are you and Hawkeye feeling, Yuzuha? Are you all recovered? Mm -hmm. All better. Thanks for asking. Look, there's Takemichi. Hey, man, what are you guys doing? Oh, Chief. Why does that dude always look like he's on edge? <laughs> always looks like he's about to explode. torturing Takemichi. Hey, get them back! <laughs> Damn it, Hakai, give me back my Emma! Who's that shouting my Emma? Uh, Takemichi. <laughs> give it back, Hakai! I am shocked as shit Takemichi managed to pull that off. So what now? Don't worry, this thing's just getting started. How dare you. <laughs> uh... <laughs> You guys see that key to key stinger? <laughs> We're just getting started. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure season three will be one hell of a ride. However, for now, we have Takamichi almost blowing his goddamn cover. Okay? What is this man doing? <laughs> he got so unbelievably specific during this. Not, not even vague. Just literally what happens to her. Both times. Well, the, the two times that he knows for sure what happened to her. Right. She, <laughs> she's died in every timeline. It's just those were the only two that like he had like direct involvement in. Yeah. So what are you doing, man? <laughs> Good thing we can everyone there can just pass it off uh, except for Chifuyu, but he wasn't there. Uh, can pass that off as Man, you really got your brains beat in today, didn't you? What do you What do you want about <laughs> uh, emotional and physical mental trauma? Yeah, it's just like, hey, so what was that? I, I don't know. I, I must have lost my mind. Taiju punched me in the face like eighteen times. It was just whatever. <laughs> I have no idea what I was talking about. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> now, 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 the only thing I, I can say about that situation is. Uh, what we got from Hina's father, he's the only one that might take it kind of seriously because he's a cop. You know what I mean? I, I could be really grasping at straws here, but they were sitting there watching. You know what I mean? And apparently they were in earshot based on the way that uh, whole situation was framed. Well, yeah, like it was framed as the mother was basically taking bets as to whether or not they were going to get together after Hina's fight with her dad. Right. They're going to get back together. So, um... I actually kind of totally forgot about that. The fact that he had the uh, discussion with the dad that was like super like mature and whatever. And he's the one that asked uh, Takamichi to break up with her. Um, but uh, <laughs> still. Um, well, we, yeah, like it, we knew that that was the reason he broke up with her. Yeah. It was just a case of, we just didn't know if he knew her. But yeah, it turns, it turns out that as soon as he broke up with her, she immediately put two and two together as you tried to do something, didn't you? Yeah. Which uh, leads me to wonder if that is different for this timeline or if that's how it was like the first time, you know, because it happened the first time. He's broken up with her yeah. on Christmas Eve every time. The, the, this was a thing. We, we talked about Emma during that uh, popularity poll thing. Uh, I guess I could put the link to that in the description if anybody wants to see that. But, uh... <laughs> what? Every time! You know what I mean? I said it during... Why? D does this... D does the show have it out for us? Can you look into this? Is it just like they know? Like, is it just like cosmic coincidence? Like, what the f*** is going on? <laughs> this is like the only show that this has happened in. You mention something and then just like, hey, yeah, you, uh, I, I don't even know, man. It's it's out of control. 
it just weirds me out. It's hilarious when it lines up, honestly. Not doing it on purpose. Uh, the, the, this is not for the content. The, this is legitimately happening and it's concerning me. It's going to keep me up at night. <laughs> uh, but I, I randomly mentioned again that he and I randomly offhandedly like mentioned it later in the episode. But freaking of the three like main girls right now, Yuzuha has more than Hida and Emma put together. Right. In the popularity votes. I, I Once again, people can like whoever they want. It's a popularity contest, whatever. It just, for like story importance and like objective assessment of the series, weirds me out from that angle of it. It's like, once again, people can like whoever they want. It doesn't matter. But it's just, I, I'm surprised that she has that few votes. Like, if you look at the, if, Anybody, like I said, I'll put the link in the description. If if you look at those numbers, it's like, did they forget a zero? Uh, like, really? Are you sure? I, I could believe a thousand eighty-seven, or a or adding a zero to that be what eighteen hundred? Yeah, that makes slightly more sense to me. I could believe that eighteen hundred <laughs> would bump her all the way up to uh, tenth. Yeah, uh, that 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 would make more sense to me, just from a that kind of perspective. But once again. People can like whoever they want, but that that's still really surprising to me. Um, but uh, <laughs> once again, like the main uh, three things that really kind of weird me out about that is the fact that Kina is twenty second, Kisaki is twenty first, and Baji is third. Yeah, uh, I I mean Baji was important, absolutely, but. Really? Third? <laughs> okay. Whatever. Uh, it is what it is. Hey, we got back to uh, what this author does really well on this. It's just character interaction and this kind of storytelling. Like, the pacing for this episode was pretty damn good. You know, we, we got all kinds of stuff in this one. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We, we got Mikey opening up to Takamichi about his grief and that he understands that it's, like, affecting him. And that he wants Takamichi to, like, be the guy who course corrects him. Which I immediately pointed out again. It's like, hey, you're asking a lot of his freaking autopilot, man. So until yeah. he gets his autopilot in uh, in order, if that's even possible, um, that's a tough ask, honestly. So that could be one of the hurdles is uh, in the future is making sure that autopilot takes care of Mikey. You know what I mean? Basically, what he has to do is he has to get enough of a support system for himself to make it sure his autopilot doesn't screw up. Right. He, he, has, he, to get, he has to get more Chifuyus and stuff like that to keep him in line. Right. And Chifuyu could be a decent key to this because he'll know it going in and Chifuyu will know it the whole time because he's going to be living through the whole damn thing. And he's going to know, I assume... Shifuyu is going to be just like Naoto, where no matter what, you know, occurs, he, he'll be able to, you know, bounce around. We, yeah, we still don't know if uh, Shifuyu is going to have Naoto's whole, like, being aware of the multiple timelines, sand style. Um, but Shifuyu, at very least, from this point on, whenever Takamichi goes to the future, is going to be able to give him a recount of what happened in this timeline. Because in every timeline from now on, he's going to know about the time travel. Right. So from that point on, he'll be able to like, this is what happened. So if you go back, you know what I mean? And then he'll be able to course correct for him because that timeline is still going to be that the timeline of how they're trying to fix it. You yeah. Know? So like, is they're still coming back to here, like this point? Yeah. Chifuyu, even if nothing happens at this point, Chifuyu of the present timeline is still always going to know the present timeline and therefore be able to recount it to Takamichi when Takamichi comes back in the future because he's aware of it now. Naoto, though, it's Naoto also time traveling, essentially. It's just instead of traveling to different points in time, he's just jumping from timeline to timeline every time Takamichi creates a new one. Right. Yeah, and his his situation is that's like spaghetti code to me. It's like, how does he become aware of just like you know what I mean? Does he just like wake up and go, holy shit, Takamichi changed something, and he like he knows like everything that's changed in his life because of it. You know what I mean? 
That's yeah, gonna it's be a bitch. It, it, it basically every time uh, Takamichi travels back to the future, Naoto's, the present Naoto's uh, memories and personality and everything update to the global Naoto, basically. Yeah, it, it's, we've talked about this before with this. It, time tra And especially in Naoto's case, what an unbelievable mess that is to like detangle and figure out you know what i mean anyway moving forward with the episode you know we got that with mikey and, and takamichi having that moment that was solid um we got you know a little bit of mikey's older brother here hmm. uh you know how he raised uh mikey and uh emma because all the parents were out of the picture uh they had the same father but different mothers so that's three he parents only, that are out of the picture entirely. Yeah, he only mentioned what happened to Emma's mother, which is basically that she pulled a raven. Yeah. But he never mentions anything about his mother and, their, and both of their father. Yep. So, you know, uh, still is uh, interesting. Also, uh, that uh, three-pronged uh, attack on uh, his brother's uh, personality uh, was pretty savage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And no, nothing like telling somebody that uh, they're unlikable because they have smelly farts. I mean, <laughs> just say you might as well just throw that one in there. Just like you can't think of a uh, another thing to insult somebody. Well, yeah, just think about that. You know, have have that one as a backup. <laughs> yeah, but, like basically the whole point of that situation in general was to further reinforce what. Mikey's already said, and that Takamichi reminds him of his brother. Right. That's one of the reasons why he likes Takamichi from the beginning, was because he reminded him of his brother. Right. And <laughs> um, Mikey's brother was not a strong fighter. He was a charismatic individual that brought people yeah, to him based on his charisma. You know? That was the next thing I was going to bring up, is the fact that yeah, Mikey is self-aware that he is emotionally weak, even though he's physically strong. And that he still views his brother as having been a better leader than him, because being physically strong doesn't actually get you very much as a leader. Like right. It's like one of the bare minimum requirements, but can be easily circumvented by just being stronger in other aspects. Yep. So that would have been a pretty solid episode in and of itself, right there. But hey, then we got Mitsuya and Draken backstory. How about them apples? Look at the young Draken right here. I landed right on it. Look at this, man. <laughs> that was impressive, that, that whole sequence. Uh, the fact that Mitsuya literally traded a piece of graffiti for barbecue. You can see that every day. That was impressive. Uh, and we did learn that they both have the same uh, head tattoo, except, well, now Mitsuya covers it for obvious reasons. But uh, <laughs> that, 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 that was impressive, uh, that whole sequence. Um, yeah, that whole, worth... like, call to reality for Mitsuya with, like, you know, the, the women at the whorehouse. Uh, like, hey, yeah, they're not doing this for fun because they, they're doing it because they have to. You know what I mean? Not because they want to. Uh, and that, that wake-up call probably helped shape him into being the, like, super responsible big brother that he became. You know what I mean? Well, it, it was that and, like, Draken's whole talk about how he has zero family. Right. To have the good or the bad from. Yeah. Uh, but the tattoo thing... So... I mentioned the whole, like, what looks like kaiju in the ruins in the ED a few times. Um, Same tattoo. Yeah, I was going to say, like, that original, like, the very first time I saw it, I just placed it as that's probably taiju. Uh, because taiju is the one with the dragon neck tattoo. But taiju's neck tattoo is different than that. And I noticed that a long time ago. But I didn't really know what else to place it as, and it's literally the exact tattoo that Mitsuya and Draken have. Yep. But we still don't know who this character is. Yeah. 
So this is a thinker. But it is the same tattoo. But, uh... We're not entirely sure who this is. So... Yeah, it's... Short black hair, which we don't really have too many short black hair characters. Most of the short haired characters dye their hair their hair blonde. Uh, which could very well mean that they are naturally black hair. We just don't know. Um, like the only natural blondes that we know of are uh, are Emma and Mikey. All right. <laughs> but yeah, so this this is something that will come up at some point, I'm sure. We, we still got three episodes left, so we might get like a, a little like... You know, just like a, a sprinkle of what's going on with this character. Uh, especially what actor like this still right here going on with uh, Coco and the other guy uh, potentially joining Tomon in this next iteration of the timeline uh, from whatever the next jumping point is. Um, whoever this guy is. Uh, but yeah, going forward, you know, that, that whole uh, Draken and Mitsuya backstory, that was solid. It got really real. Uh, I like the way that was handled. Um... And that was only, like, half the episode. <laughs> then we kept going. But yeah, the, the sequence, you know, the New Year sequence, that was that was well handled. Um, but they did frame it, so it's probably reasonably important. You know, Takamichi didn't want it to be uh, read out loud or anything, but uh, at the very least, it could be moderately hilarious. So The most likely, and, like, at minimum, it's going to be something related to, like, is swearing to protect and save Hina. Yeah. But at more damning things, it could actually be something related to like him wishing for a better future or something like that that someone could actually put two and two together on. Right. Because once again, Mikey still seems pretty damn aware. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, since he, goes this thing... his, he goes out of his way to hide it at times, but like of the other of the characters who have supernatural powers in this, my, uh, Takamichi's the only one who's confirmed, but Kisaki and Mikey are the other two that are most likely. Right. So yeah, the, the, this whole sequence was interesting. It was nice to see uh, the like the other uh, the other captains just kind of being thrown in there, so we don't forget about them. Uh, they, they are people too, and they're just kind of hanging out, doing New Year's stuff, uh, being around. Um, once I've yet. been led to believe by other people that they do become important eventually. Yeah, I mean, they got time. You know, I, I don't... I, as much as Takamichi thinks he's, like, close to, you know, uh, completely solving the problem, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. He, he we, we haven't even gotten into Kisaki yet, you know what I mean? He, he might be close to saving Hina. But solving the problem, no. There's still a lot left to be resolved. Plus, I do know of a few future things that are going to very much <laughs> uh, slow the uh, we're done with this check mark off. Fair enough. Like there, it, shit gets uh, quite a bit more complicated from even just a couple of things that I do know about future story arcs. Yeah, so that's coming. What's also coming is Yuzuha having a one-sided crush on Takamichi. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, the, this guy is bad with girls across the board, apparently. <laughs> Can't figure out shit. <laughs> mm. It's just like, yeah, I can see why you like him. It's just like, don't you think you would have noticed me having a crush on Mitsuya like at any point in the past? You're, are you really? Come on. <laughs> So uh, it'll be interesting to see if they do anything with this. Um, if it's just like a one-off, like she mentions it and she's like, no, I know he's with Hina, but that doesn't mean I can't have a thing for him. It's just like, can you though? We, we've seen stuff like that turn out kind of poorly in, in other fantasy, in just other <laughs> stories and stuff like that. So it's like, can she just leave it alone though? You know it what I mean? It largely depends. Like she seems to have enough of her shit together that she's not going to like freaking pull something that'll cause problems. It'll probably be just more of a case of, like, sh she'll just kind of hang out and want to be friends with Takamichi, and then, like, if anything does ever actually happen between him and Hina, she might try to uh, 
get together with his autopilot. Yeah. <laughs> could but, see that. Uh, th this was basically them wrapping up the uh, three potential love interest shenanigans of he's with Hina and Hina and him are like the main couple but now we know Yuzu has a crush on him and his autopilot has a crush on Emma. Yeah. Such a bad problem to have. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, so that that's interesting. Um, so we'll see if anything comes of that. And then the last little tidbit that we got for Taiju was him being bent out of shape that he was just trying to like prepare Hakai for the harshness of the world and make trying to make him tough. And the fact that this nerd Takamichi just comes around and just does it in point five. And I guess he has no business being around here anymore since somebody has it handled. So he's just going to walk away. <laughs> but not change his ways, apparently. Yeah, no, that whole shtick was basically just him handing over the household to Yuzaha and saying that, yeah, you've practically been in charge for a while now anyway. I've just basically just been around just to torment Hakai in hopes he'll get his shit together. And now that Hakai seems like he might be starting to get his shit together, fuck this, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I definitely think we, we need and probably will get more Taiju in the future. We talked about it, you know, extensively before why. Um, so... You know, we still got three episodes left, so... Once know. again, I think he might be done for this season, but he's gonna come back at some point. Whether it's, like, different timeline shenanigans or uh, just as part of a future story arc, who knows, but I can only guarantee that he's going to come back at some point. Right. Because ba ba based on this, uh, the way the anime is going, because very minimal source material knowledge outside of the stuff that age knows um this definitely doesn't feel like a like a, a four season show you know what i mean this feels like you know at least a hundred episodes you know what i mean yeah like this <sighs> going on the pacing we've got so far and like the little bit of future knowledge i do have we're probably looking at at least so we're doing 13 episodes a season so we're probably looking at at least six seasons probably yeah because the first one was two core so by the end of this we'll be at 37 episodes mm -hmm. so yeah um so yeah i still think there's plenty to go you know this is like tail end of like act one if you will you know what i mean so yeah like i said first act slash like major step of the story is probably just going to be saving Hina. Uh, or we're going to get something else to pop up at some point that'll be, be more of a immediate point and they'll save the whole saving Hina to be the final end goal. Right. But as it stands right now, that's like the closest thing we are to at the moment. So it seems like they're aiming more for that being the first goal. And then it's going to lead into bigger problems with like Hizuki and Mikey and other shenanigans. Yep. So yeah, this was solid. Pacing was good. Um, got all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't really have too much more to say about this one personally. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the last three episodes entail, you know? There's only so much we can speculate on at this point because this kind of wraps up this situation at the moment. Uh, we just got to kind of see what Kisuke is cooking up at this point, right? Yeah. So that's where we're at. You got anything else, Age? Um, I guess on a final Kisuke note, I. Ever since we got the Kisaki backstory bit, I'm questioning whether or not they're going to go with Kisaki having supernatural powers. It's obviously there's a lot of indication that he's we're going for the he's got supernatural awareness of the timelines too. But since we've never seen him manipulate the timelines in any way as of yet. 
just seem to have advanced knowledge of stuff. We got his backstory that he's supposed to be like some super genius. It could just be argued off as a case of his supernatural trait is just that he's smart enough to be putting 17 and 39 together right now to figure out what's happening, even if he himself doesn't have like some magical awareness of the timeline. Right. Oh, yeah, um, I say this before, even last season, that he is <laughs> probably the most interesting character in the series purely because he is. I, I've had this discussion with people before, like um, in like the wrestling universe, uh, when we're talking about like uh, faces and heels, uh, and just in general, like we, we had this discussion recently with. Uh, this ridiculous nonsensical thing that happened in hardcore classic wow but uh if if the villain isn't good that takes away a lot from the story you know what i mean look at the joker for batman okay that's like one of the easiest biggest examples out there you know what i mean without the joker batman is way worse okay so the way kisaki is portrayed so far it makes it very interesting so um However, I mean, without go, the Joker, without the Joker, Batman probably wouldn't have even lasted popularity-wise enough for some of his other like reasonably good villains to even make an appearance. Right. So uh, th that's where Kisaki's at. Uh, he he has that mystique factor. He's had it since season one, um, and I just hope he gets written well as as the villain. You know what I mean? If that is his, you know, full on. You know end game you know what i mean how he's how his character arc is going to go you know what i mean he's definitely an antagonist we just don't know if he's actually the villain of the story yet right because once again those are not one and the same that's one thing a lot of people like falsely attribute in uh in the writing and storytelling and stuff like that they think oh the antagonist had a face turn when a lot of times, no, it's they weren't an evil person to begin with. They were just antagonists towards the main cast. So people thought of them as the villain. Right. To, to take a look at Prince Zuko from The Last Airbender, that's what you need to look at. <laughs> yeah, Zuko's never was never the, the the villain of Avatar. He was just an antagonist for Aang. Right. Up until the last season. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, what what Kiski is doing going forward here. Um, I'm sure uh, we'll get that at some point in these next three episodes, whether it's immediately. Um, I'm I'm up for more like random backstory, like we got this episode with anybody at this point. You know what I mean? I I wouldn't consider that filler if they like kind of like did history on like some of the other captains or just like random nonsense going on, like when they like found Emma and Mikey at the cafe. You know, an episode like that. You know what I mean? Stuff like that, like just typical like slice of life episodes, uh, just for whatever. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to just jump into the next story arc immediately. You know what I mean? He's out here yelling about my Emma. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that was that was actually pretty good. But uh, you know, um, at some point in these last three episodes, I assume we're gonna get something with Kisaki, and I'm sure it'll be pretty damn important. Does it have to be immediate? No. Does it have to happen before the end of the season? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I like. I can't imagine we won't get at least one episode in the future where we'll like get some shenanigans with future Kisaki and uh, since they're framed together, since he's framed together with the lieutenants uh, in the ED, we'll probably see like whatever he and he had with them during autopilot time. Right. So there you have it, uh, Tokyo Avengers, season two, episode 10. Pretty damn solid. Looking forward to the last three here. Um, once again, we might be mashing 12 and 13 together, but if that's the case, we'll just talk about that when week 12 comes around. But uh, other than that, we'll leave you on the super menacing Kisaki face. Uh, yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, people of youtube beyond have you watching we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo this was tokyo avengers season 2 episode 10 we got three to go
So have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing that subscribe and like button. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and see you next time.